hi guys welcome back to my channel um let me tell you guys about my last two days i woke up yesterday morning to realize that it was february 1st and since we are now year-round homeschoolers and i decided to do one week off and then three weeks on this is my week off i definitely did school on monday and tuesday <laughs> okay <laughs> But it was a much welcome surprise because I was exhausted. The kids have been continuing to work on their community project, their cardboard community, and some other geography projects that we started and we're trying to finish up. Um, I decided to extend our geography unit a little bit for um, probably about three more weeks. Um, so that pushed back our geography fair. It pushed it back a couple of weeks, which is good because the kids are really enjoying it and we're pulling lots of information from it and this unit has been fun. Now that I've realized this was my week off, I am into planning mode, into filming mode, um, having a lot of fun with the kids, playing with them and such, and yeah, I started to film this video yesterday. Actually, I did more than start. I filmed it, okay? I filmed the video yesterday. I got the edit done last night. Um, it took me about two hours or so. I got it all finished and was just way too sleepy to go ahead and load it. So I went to bed. I woke up this morning to go and load the video onto YouTube and publish for you guys. And guess what? I lost the footage. I deleted all the footage by accident. I don't know what happened. I There was just a really big lump in my stomach. It wasn't good, okay, you guys? It was not good, okay? <laughs> the good part about it is that the tail end of the video is still there. But the first part of the video, not so much. I'm going to attempt to refilm this first part of the video. I even put on somewhat of the same thing that I had on yesterday. So if you notice that I look slightly different than the end of this video, that is why. Basically this video is going to be a little bit about how my kids learned to read. I get a lot of questions and a lot of comments about the kids reading and you guys have been so super sweet about it and you're right they are such good readers they are really wonderful readers and I hesitated to do this video at first because we don't use a curriculum I, I guess what I mean is we don't use a um, proper curriculum we haven't used a proper curriculum and so to sit down and try to figure out how to explain how they learn to read um, just a little bit different than a norm but I'm gonna try the very first thing that laid the foundation for me was the book that I mentioned to you guys, The Brainy Bunch um, by Kip and Mona Lisa Harding. In that book, she just had really great tips on how her kids learn to read and uh, I really held on to those. It was the first time that I realized that, um, you know what, my kids might be capable of teaching themselves how to read. So uh, that was the very first introduction I had to the idea that uh, I may not have to sit down and just teach them, you know, everything bit by bit on my own. I think that the thing that I did the best was trust the process. After reading that book, um, it really gave me the okay to go ahead and trust that process. What I learned from that is that if given the space and the right tools, they will teach themselves. Um, I am a believer in that and that is just because I have experienced it. I definitely gave them a lot of space because I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I think the number one thing that I hear most people say about teaching your kids to read is to read to them. And I'm gonna have to be very honest with you guys, I did not read to my kids that much. Um, I barely read to them. Uh, in the beginning, you know, you're so excited about having your little baby and you start reading to them and all that other stuff. I didn't do that. I had this new baby and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with you? Like breastfeeding and all of that other stuff. My emotions were all over the place. I was trying to manage my emotions and all that I had to do as a new mom. So 
yeah all that wonderful sitting down reading to them at night the bedtime stories i didn't do that i'm not saying don't read to your kids obviously but i'm just being honest because i believe that it's been by grace that all the things that i didn't do so well um they've still thrived um so I just wanted to mention that and I did experience a lot of frustrations because I imagined that sitting and reading to your kids was supposed to be this, you know, nice, tranquil, beautiful experience and it wasn't for me and my boys. Um, they were flipping all over the place. They didn't want to sit down and listen to what I had to say and I got frustrated. And um, I know better now. I know now that I can sit and read to them and let them play with Legos and let them do their own thing and they're listening in the background but I didn't know that then. And so I was very frustrated and I felt like if they're not going to sit down and listen I'm not reading. <laughs> I know it's bad but it's true um, when Savannah came along she's a totally different child so she is definitely all about sitting down and listening to mommy read and so I read with her a ton more than I did with the boys and like I said I'm not saying this to say don't read to your kids I'm just saying that sometimes we're really hard on ourselves and we think that our kids are gonna have a major deficit because we didn't do certain things and I'm just letting you know that I didn't I did not read to them that often when they were little. Actually, they learned to read well before I started reading to them a whole lot. So, there's that. The things that I think I did do right now, looking back, is that um, I would sit down and look for apps. I would just go through them for hours and try to find apps that they would, that I liked a lot and that I thought would be super helpful. I always try to find the free versions. There's always like a limited version that you can download first for most apps. And I would just put them all, you know, download the set of apps that I found and let them play. The things that I found that they were playing with the most or engaged most in, then I considered purchasing the upgrade or buying the subscription. I think it's in the unschooling community, they call it strewing. And I guess that's just when you go and you find resources and you lay them out in the child's path and if they happen to stumble upon it then they do and they love it and they grab onto it then that's wonderful and if they don't it's not a big deal and i think that that's pretty much what i did somewhat of like an electronic strewing that would be the first thing that was super beneficial for us in them learning how to read one of the very beginning programs that i had the kids watch constantly was leapfrog on netflix leapfrog has amazing programs they have the letter factory and several other phonics programs and that is how the kids learn their letter sounds um it does an amazing job at communicating to the children um the letters the sounds and different words that you know start with those letters animals that start with those letters so that is how they learn their letters and their letter sounds they would watch it every single day sometimes all day like when mommy was having a rough day they were watching leapfrog um and i am going to do a more in-depth video about how we do electronics in our house because it's definitely a balance you you have to know when to let them just go and give them space and then you also have to know when to pull them back and tell them okay enough is enough so um i think the key to electronics is just to only making available to them the things that will be beneficial to them and their learning and when they're playing those types of games and watching those types of programs I'm okay <laughs> like I'm fine with that because they're learning and um, then all I have to do is come back in and reinforce some things so anyway I'll talk more about how we do electronics in a different video, I guess, because I did get, uh, I do get a lot of questions about that. One of the very first apps that they had was an app that I don't think is available anymore, but it was like from Moose to Z. It was a Nick Jr. app. I think it was from A to Z with Moose and Z, and it was the cutest little app, but they did a great job um, laying out the letters and the letter sounds and um, with some little interactive games and stuff, so I don't think they have it anymore. 
which is sad because it was a really really good app but I wonder if there's something like it I'll try and check it out after that another one of the early apps that I had that we still have now is called interactive alphabet we love this app it's really wonderful it just has uh, like this little robotic song with the alphabet and um, it goes through the letter sounds and it does uh, letter formation they have to follow the dots to write out the letters um, what I really like about it is how interactive it is and also that you can customize it um, so they have like a set of words um, already loaded onto the app and um, they go through and spell the words they show an illustration for the word and then they can and, um they can you they can use letter formation to write out the word which is really nice but then in addition to that you can go in and create your own words so that you can build your vocabulary you can add a picture you can add the word and then it will have them trace the word it's really wonderful we love that app so so much we still have it they still use it they probably don't still need it but we still hold on to it and they use it a lot they use it quite often so the next thing that we had that I downloaded was the ABC mouse I don't think that I signed up for the subscription to begin with I started with the free readers that they let you download for free um, I think there's probably like 12 or so of them there may be more now but they were the um, the simple books like To Run Is Fun and um, Ham and Jam, Ham Is Jam or something like that. Um, they had those books. They were really little. The boys were really little when they were going through those. I almost swear by those things, okay? What's really wonderful about them is that um, it will go through and read the book to the child but then also you can turn it off so that the child can go in and read it themselves. And when they go and touch the word, it will say the word back to them. So the kids would just go in and they would just press that word, those words over and over again until they were reading it on their own and eventually they knew the words themselves and then they knew the stories by heart. So we love those ABC Mouse dot com free readers and I'll never forget the night that I realized that um, my youngest son could actually read them um, we had just finished bathing them for the night he had to be not quite two years old yet he had to be maybe about 18 months or so and we were on the bed we had just gotten their pajamas on and he sat down with his ipad and he started reading the book himself um and i looked at brian and i was like um did he memorize the 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 story so we turned on another story and he read that one and I was like, baby, he memorized all the stories. So then I go and grab a book out of the classroom. And I bring the book in and he starts reading that book. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> he can read. So anyway, that was neither here nor there. But that was when I first realized that this stuff was really working. After that, uh, I did end up getting a subscription and we love abcmouse.com. We don't use it any longer and I do know that they added like the second grade curriculum to it, um, which is nice. We do use it when we go over to the library because um, we can use it over there for free. So that is how they use it, but I no longer have a subscription to it. The next thing that I would say that we did was everyday reading and spelling. For instance, when you're out and about and you see a stop sign, uh, I would say to the boys, um, that says stop, S-T-O-P, spell stop. Or if we walk by a white house, I'd say, look at that white house, H-O-U-S-E, spells house. And I did that quite often. And now that they're older, we still do the same thing, just with bigger words. And I think that that works so well, and the kids catch on to it so much. Another thing that we do is that when the kids are watching their favorite television programs, we put the captions on. Like this is something that has been great for us. When they're watching their favorite shows, we put the captions on. And so as they would watch, they also see the corresponding words 
because it works so well. And even the other day we were watching the news, of course you have to monitor what your children are watching, obviously, but um, we were watching the news and they had the ticker at the bottom of the screen. And now what the kids do is they try to read the ticker before it goes away. And they think it's super fun and it's great. It's wonderful for their vocabulary building. We also use lots of other apps, apps that I believe I have mentioned before um, for vocabulary building. Um, apps like Endless Reader and Endless Alphabet. We love those. They're just really cute games that the kids play. They have sentences that correspond with the illustrations and the little stories. And um, we started off with the free version. And when I see that they're playing with them enough, I will purchase the extended versions. And then they run right through those. And that is how they build their vocabulary. And then um, as the boys are getting older, there's another app called Phonics Genius, I believe. And they have a wonderful listing of vocabulary words that are sorted by first letter of the word. And that is how they really have been building up their vocabulary to include lots of really you know hefty words um i remember a year or so ago uh kendall running into the room and spelling op ophthalmoscope which i didn't even know what it was at first <laughs> so um that was a word that he learned from that app um, in the section where the words start with the letter O. Um, the last app or program that I want to talk about is called Learn With Homer. I love, we love Learn With Homer. I used it for the boys and I now use it for Savannah. It's actually a complete curriculum and it is, it has the cutest illustrations. I think it's done so well and that is how, um, it's, I think it's really well done, really well made, and um, that is how they also learn the letter blends. So the EE, -E, the EA, um, it's a really wonderful curriculum that you can follow from beginning to end. They even have like printables, things you can print out that will go along with what they actually learned on the app. And the kids use that. It really is great for them taking ownership over their reading process. It'll have them um, sound out a certain word and record their own voice to hear themselves and play it back. It's just a wonderful app. It also has lots of great um, songs. Um, like Jenny Jenkins that the kids love um, and poetry and um, we really love that app so that's a really good one that we are still currently subscribed to yeah guys so this was how my kids learned to read I think that whatever I else I had to say in yesterday's video that I lost the first section of the footage to I'll just go ahead and play here I don't know I hope this is helpful to you I think the biggest thing I did was just trust the process I kind of sort of kicked and screamed through it because I definitely had many many moments where I felt like I was not doing a good enough job and I was not doing enough but I think that it lended itself to the process because I I backed off. I wasn't in it as much and I let them naturally learn using the resources that they were given. Um, if they got something wrong, I, I try my best not to correct them right away. I give them a chance to figure it out first before I step in to try and correct them. Um, I really feel like that builds their confidence in knowing that they're capable of figuring it out on their own. I mean, homeschooling, being their mom and their teacher is really such a, a rewarding and beautiful process. I kick and scream, <laughs> I, like, just like anybody else, I, I feel like anybody else, but um, um, it's been wonderful to sit back and see what they are capable of without me having to like nitpick at every little thing. Seeing how they have learned to read um, the way that they have has really given me even more confidence in homeschooling and even more confidence in their ability to learn as little people. So <laughs> it was really just a lot of trial and error and trusting the process. And that was how they learned to read and are continuing to learn 
um, to read and build their vocabulary. So if you like videos like this, just make sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're not subscribed already, make sure you're subscribed so that you get notifications when we post. Um, and you can leave me a comment below if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello. Um, thank you guys so much for reaching out to me. Thank you for being patient with me as I respond to some of your emails. You guys have been amazing reaching out just with different um, ideas and things of what we can do together with our kids. It's really, I'm really excited for the future and I am really excited to just have this little space to be able to share. I hope that this channel um, shows an authentic journey. I constantly juggle between, you know, wanting to seem like an expert and just trying to be as, as authentic as possible. You know, this is our journey. I've made a lot of mistakes. There's been a lot of grace. You know, we're using a lot of faith over here and it's, I'm, it's just getting better and better. And so I, I guess I would just say to you, if you're in one of those years where you're really struggling, like what in the world am I doing? First of all, know that I say what in the world am I doing probably once a week, which it used to be once a day. So now to get to once a week, it's really good. So um, you're probably doing an amazing job. And even if you're not, just believe by faith that it just will get better and better. And it does. This is our fourth year now. And I'm excited about what our fifth and sixth year look like because year one through three. <laughs> I don't need those anymore. But anyway, it's part of the process. And it's the most beautiful part, I feel like, because it's the part where I learned to strip myself of that ideal of what education for my children is supposed to be like, you know? So anyway, um, I probably need to go out there and get in there and play with them and help them build their cardboard community and such and try to have as much fun as possible with them because when you have fun with them, they want to learn from you. Um, I love being able to like jump in there with them and just say I have an idea and really you know just get all in there and they look at you and they smile and you can tell they're happy that you're there and that you're present and they are ready to learn from you so um, I'm excited about these weeks in between um, our little breaks because it'll just give me some space to just really be with them and connect and make sure that they still want to learn from me you know so Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me in my hiding space. Yeah. Oh, here she is. Hey, baby.